Hello and welcome to the tutorial series. In this first part, we're going to use ChatGPT and get the data into Houdini. So we will basically save the data into a file, JSON file. You can in theory use other formats, but I will show it with JSON files. And we will then generate something like store names, slogans, things like that. Save it to a file and then I will show you show it how to open it or uh, read the data back into Houdini so we can use it for making a tool. So first, I'm going to show you how I approached the generation of the file with ChatGPT. Um, the first thing that I did is I asked it to create a JSON file that follows this, this uh, type of structure. So I would like to see store names. So I'm going to say store. And in store, I would have a name for the store. I want to have a slogan. And I want to have a style, which I will use in Houdini. You will see later on in the videos. I will add a style to this, so one, two, three, four, for example. If we make a JSON, it's sometimes very useful to just be very clear with this about what type of data you want. If you want like a boolean true or false, you're gonna to have to say exactly what type of data you want. So in this case, it's pretty clear, and my also my my output from GPT is also pretty clear. It's like a JSON file that has basically uh, roughly what I want. So you can still see that it's like describing store A, B, C, and D. So in a moment, we will then fix that by filling by filling in actual store names instead of uh, what we have now. So that's, of course, was my next question to like make another JSON file, but like give better examples in terms of like store names. So now we get better store names like the supermarket, the discount warehouse, things like that. So that's sort of like works roughly well so now we have basic data to work with now we can also uh, for example add certain colors like maybe um, for each store there is like a certain color that defines it and maybe that could be used to make like the ad boards for example so we can say like uh, for each store add a certain more like pastel color which is more like the a lighter color not too extremely heavy so add a color to each store uh, and give it also in an RGB value, because if you're not specifying um, if it's a RBG or something else, you might get different results. So you need to, again, specify things a bit more. Otherwise, you might get results that maybe just like uh, writes the color like blue. Um, but you actually want to have RGB values that will be easy to work with in Houdini. And once we know that we are pretty happy with the output, so of course you can in theory, keep adding more and more and more things. Like you can add a lot of different things. But for us, or for this tutorial, it's more than enough to get started. So basically now I just got to ask, like, give me other variations. And this is then other variations, other store names, slogans, styles, colors. Like it just will give us a bunch of like different uh, variations. So now we can basically start to copy some of this code into a JSON file. So if I go here into visual code, you will see that I will make this into one bigger JSON. So I generated a few results, I think like 16 uh, different results. So they have different names, uh, slogans, colors, and so on. So this is now my uh, result to work with. So this is a JSON file, JSON structure, where we can get the data. So in a moment, I will uh, show you how to import this into Houdini and how do we know uh, get, for example, the store names. Like, how do we uh, translate that into Houdini? This will be using, uh, of course, Python. So, make a geometry network. And in here, uh, we're going to make a Python node. Our file will then be sort of like opened or referenced here. And then we can start modifying and reading the data from this. Now, we're going to maybe remove these comments and at the top so to import the json we also need to have the um, json library so import uh, json then uh, we need to have where the file is and we want to probably do it a bit uh, in a dynamic way so we don't want to hard code the location so i'm going to create like a parameter here at the bottom of this node so we're going to go here to edit interface once we are editing the interface, we can look for um, like a file directory. Um, so we can grab file. We can give this a better name, like just maybe keep it simple. This is our file. And let's press accept. So now you should see here at the top uh, a bar where we can uh, link a file into. 
So for me, it's for example, just stored on my D drive and I have now a store, uh, the, the JSON structure. Now we want to then reference or get the file path into our code here. So like we had here, file is equal to a node. So looking at the node, the Python node itself and do an evaluation of the parameter called, in our case again, file. So make sure the namings are correct so you can reference the file. So again, we are having file. So now that should be working. So if you click outside the node, you should not have an error. Um, if you have an error, then either the naming is wrong or the function uh, might be typed really wrong. Then once we have that, we are going to uh, ask, ask to open the JSON file. So with open uh, file dot r read and we're gonna say as uh, json files so we're going to now ask it to just like uh, try to open this file location or just json location then we're going to say that the input um, is equal to json dot load and then we're going to say json file now we can of course for example print um, input and let's see what that gives us so make sure you're typing this right i made a small mistake i forgot the s so if you print this now uh, you should have a console popping up and then again uh, we have the store name so this is all the data basically into one big uh, chunk here so now that we have that loaded and as a JSON, it also understands the structure of a JSON. So JSON is very easy since we can just simply say like, uh, check the input for something which is called name, and then it will give you all the name of the stores. So that's very useful to, to have, so we don't have to do anything uh, too special. So if you now, for example, would say that, so for uh, the data in the input, then we want to maybe then we can already specifically say what type of input which in our case is uh, stores like so so stores is of course referencing to this part so we're going to ask to loop over the stores data so it will loop over each of these uh, blocks basically and then we can ask then again the name or the slogan and so on so we're going to say like look for stores and loop over each part so if you have, uh, for example, a JSON file that has um, something else, like maybe you generate uh, instead of stores, uh, something differently, then you need to rename this as well. So here we have stores. Then we can, for example, say print data. And then we can say from the data, and like I mentioned, we can target the name, for example. So print the name of each store. Oh, I forgot to close the print. And as you can see, we now have all the names of the stores. So maybe I'm gonna clear out here for a moment. So now we have all these names. So that's like an easy way uh, sort of to quickly get some of this data. Now, it's still now, right now in into a Python setup. I would like to see this into like a geometry spreadsheet setup with points and point clouds, things like that. So let's talk about making a point with Python. So the easiest way to, for example, spam a point um, would be I'm going to remove the print here again. So we're going to say that, uh, for example, our new point equals to our geometry. So geometry is already made here by default. This was like a default thing uh, in the Python node. So geometry dot the function called create a point. So this is, of course, really easy to just spawn one single point or in this case it's in a loop so for each store name or for each uh, store um, data it will create like one single point so i'm going to open my spreadsheet here because i will also then assign the attributes there is some work to this um, we will basically need to sort of like initialize um, what attributes we wa we want to create and then we can assign them so at the beginning it could either be at the top here or after we say that we have the JSON we can for example say that our geometry now so geometry dot add the attribute value so add uh, 
uh, attributes. We basically want to say um, Houdini uh, attributes. We're going to specifically say that it's going to be point attributes. You need to definitely um, sort of like be straightforward with uh, what type of attribute. So here attributes type dot uh, point. So we're going to say we want to spawn a bunch of points and assign to each point the name or the slogan, things like that. So we are defining a point and we also need to give this a name. So this could be store. This is the store name. And then uh, we can say by the, we need to give it sort of like a default value. Um, I'm going to set this to none. And then we're going to close that off here. Maybe I'm going to make it like a bit bigger here. So we need to initialize that. And then once that is done, uh, we can now assign to our point. So we have the point. So point dot set uh, a new uh, attribute. So set new attribute value, which in our case uh, would be targeting um, the stores. So we need to say the name, so stores. And then we're going to set um, the value, which is going to be uh, data and then uh, name, for example. And we want to close off this. And if all went right, we should now see for each point the name of that attribute, like that. And we basically want to repeat this action. So if you want to get the slogan, it's going to be the same thing. We're going to get the style and we're going to get the colors. Now, of course, you can um, have a difference. So these are like more integers and vectors. So you can also convert them to that. So the slogan will be the same. So this is, will also be like a string value. So it will be text values. So here we're going to say, uh, for example, slogan or subtext. Uh, could be up to you. How do you want to call this? So here, copy paste this as well. And we're going to say uh, slogan. And here and here also. Slogan. And this again should give us the data again here in the points. Now, when it comes to then um, getting that integer, so getting the style number, so it's not a, a string anymore, we're going to do the same thing. Um, so I'm going to copy paste this line of code. I'm going to give this um, the name style, and we're not going to use uh, none. I'm going to just use number zero. So this will sort of like, again, initializing or, or set, setting this to be uh, an integer value. And we're going to do the same thing here. Don't necessarily need to do uh, much uh, usually sometimes you need to convert the data if it's needed but should be fine so in this case style like so i also need to give this the name style and you should have a number so if i would uh, preview the data here so we can see that that this should be a uh, integer because that will be easier to work with later on um, if we assign this to something that we know it's an integer and not a string uh, so that's always good to know. Uh, and then the last part was the color. So the color is a, a vector. So we can copy paste this as well. And we're going to say, for example, uh, color. Or you can directly um, use the Houdini term, which is CD uh, for color. So it's up to you. And to specify that this could be vector, I'm going to use the sort of like official Houdini dot uh, new vector tree. So it knows it's like in the Houdini uh, format like this. And uh, so it will spawn now these colors. And now I need to assign it uh, here as well. So points, dot set attributes, uh, color, so CD. And here we probably just named it color. And as you can see, um, this was what I mentioned is sometimes we need to convert the data. So here it's going to say like, oh yeah, we cannot convert um, one thing to another so i'm going to close this off so you can see that this is not working so we are not able to sort of like convert this into a vector tree so it depends also how the how the json file is made uh, there are some variations as well there um so let's break it down here so our color is equal to data to colors and then here um, we're going to try to use the houdini dot vector tree as well and we're going to say um, use the color like so and now we will have the proper uh, sort of like format so we need to drag to this um, 
the reflect conversion to the vector tree. So now it should be fine. So now we have the data. So again, the more data you build, the more things you will need to add here and to attributes as well. But this is like a bare minimum of codes that you will need. So it's not too complicated. It's mainly about, again, a big part is here as assigning all these attributes, but reading the actual JSON um, is, is pretty straightforward in this case. And that was it for this first video. So I showed you how to use ChatGPT to form a, a, a sort of like data structures in, into a JSON, for example. So we can target store names, slogans, we can do other things. Uh, we can generate as much values that we want in there and then we make it into one file, a JSON file in our case, and then we read that into Houdini and then we make a point cloud. So the next videos will basically, everything will branch out from this point cloud. So if I want to generate the text, I'm just going to loop over each point and generate the text data and so on.